Good morning, beloveds. Last day with this background for a week and a couple of days. Uh, today is the day that I get to pick my brother up from the airport. So super excited about that. Also why I'm running really late because we're making trying to make the last minute tweaks to the room. Um, you know, because he only uses it for a week every couple of years. <laughs> After that, it goes back to its, you know, former glorious cat hangout. All right, it is October 27th. Our title is The Potential of Your Word Power. Our author is Vetura Patkey. This is from Angel in Residence, and it's from 1995 uh, from a Science of Mind. And it's, she's going to start off with a quote from Isaiah. All right. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. And that is Isaiah 55, 11. We are all following certain paths, avenues, freeways to everything we experience. We are also creatures of habit and have a tendency to take the same way to work, to the store, to church, etc. The same thing is true to attain healing. Whether it be physical illness, emotional experience, monetary lack, or whatever the challenge is we need to meet, to arrive at the place we want to be, we must do something. To come here, we had to take a definite and specific way. True, we might have taken another, we might have taken other routes, but to arrive at the place we have arrived at, there has to be acceptance on our part of a direction. Most of us want to change our lives for the better. We want to be healed of something, get rid of something, or acquire something. Religious science teaches us a way. It is a map, a guide to the highway of life. And then she doesn't give it to you, right? <laughs> okay, but let's talk about that. So, um, the potential of your word power. Uh, she does the Isaiah quote, my, my word will, will not return unto me void. I quote that a lot. Jesse quotes that a lot. Ernest quoted it a lot. Uh, in fact, I thought it was an Ernest Holmes quote until I realized, oh, nope, it came from Isaiah. It was in the Bible. Um, but she starts out saying, we are creatures of habit and have a tendency to take the same way to work. There's some interesting research on brain plasticity. Uh, at first they thought, okay, the brain, once the brain, was, once you were finished growing, that was it. The brain couldn't do anything else. You were stuck with the brain that you had. Um, they're now learning that the brain actually is constantly creating new pathways. And one of the best ways to stimulate new pathways is by taking a different route to work or wherever it is that you're going by traveling in new directions or by learning something new. Now, her argument is we have a map. And it is a very good map, and we do not need to stray from that. What is the map that she's talking about? Treatment. She is talking about treatment. She is talking about the five to seven steps, depending on if you want to use the denial and the reaffirmation. She is saying that your words have power when you, one, speak them, two, believe in them. Okay? Uh, and that's, that's something that Reverend Jesse was talking about within the last couple of Sundays. It's like, and actually, it's something science of mind is constantly talking about because we're constantly, you hear the phrase pray without ceasing. Well, what does that mean? Everything that you speak has the potential to be creative. The question is, is how much emotion is there behind it? Do you have a lot of emotion wrapped up behind it? Then whatever you said will be creative, which makes you think of all the expletives that you have said in your life and what they could have created. Yeah, it gives us something to think about, right? Um, it's one of the reasons why they say with cancer patients, the, the, the patients who are happy, joyful, go lucky tend to survive. And the patients who are really angry tend to survive because they've got a lot of emotion wrapped up in that. It's the people who are kind of apathetic who don't. OK, they wrap it up in that. They're wrapping it up in that emotion. The people who are really angry about it are like, I'm going to fight this. You know, so they've got all the, and they believe that they can. So they've got that thought wrapped in feeling. 
And same with the, the happy, the happy, joyful people. It's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get through this. And they've got the th- thought wrapped in the feeling. And they do. So what uh, Ms. Papke is telling us is, look, whatever it is that you have gone through, there is a way to get, th- there is a way out. And we tend to use the same routes every time. And so I'm going to tell you one thing. Or I'm, I'm, I'm going to suggest, it's going to sound like one thing, but I'm t- actually saying another thing. Because I mentioned, you know, if you want to increase your brain plastic, plasticity, go a different way to work. Okay. So we have this, as she says, map. But there's not just one way to do it. Okay. So we have the five steps, or like I said, seven steps of treatment. Recognition, recognizing that there is one power up, and that's all there is. Recognizing that since there is only one power, you're made from that power. You were made by that power, of that power, for that power. Okay, that's recognition. Um, realization is where you say, this is what I want. If it's in alignment with God, then... There's no reason why you can't have it. Now, here's where those other two steps might come in. Because maybe in the back of your mind, you're going, I don't deserve that. At which point you throw in that denial and go, yes, I do. And then you re- reaffirm what you want. Okay. But if you are fully on board with your, realiza- your realization, then you don't need those two steps. But they're there for you to use if you do. You deny the thought that is niggling the back of your head and you then reaffirm what it is that you want and then gratitude and then the last step which is the one we all have the most trouble with let go let go and let god let go and let spirit let go and know that your word will not return unto you void now that does not mean you are then free of responsibility it means now you got to pay attention you got to listen and you got to take the guidance as it comes to you uh, <clears throat> people will come and say things to you and people will come, you will see, see billboards and you will go, huh, you know, that's a really good idea. Maybe I should think about that. So that's where we are. That is what she is talking. About. But the good news about that is it's a definite map, but there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it. Okay. What you want to do is fill that map with words that resonate with you. And if you find that you have been doing a certain treatment for a certain amount of time and you are not getting results, then it's time to change the treatment. Ernest says you never do the same treatment again. Each time you treat, you're actually the treating the treatment before. Or maybe you're treating the belief that um, maybe you don't deserve what you're asking for. So um, there is what I'm going to say. And... Go back to that Isaiah quote. Go back. Uh, so shall my word be be that go forth that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Basically, I am going to speak my word, and it is going to return to me abundantly about the things that I have spoken. If I believe if I have the thought wrapped in the feeling and believe that I deserve it. If I don't believe that I deserve it, then the next time I do the treatment, I need to treat the belief that I don't deserve it. Now, occasionally we ask for things that may be out of alignment with spirit. I'll give you a good example. Um, When we are treating about partners, so you want a partner, a romantic partner, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you have your heart set on one specific person, that is out of alignment. We don't get to treat for the specific person. What we do get to do is look at the qualities of a person and say, these are the qualities that I want. Because we cannot compel another person. It's not one, it's not the way this works. And two, it's out of alignment with life and God and the universe. Um, so, if there is one person you have your heart set on, you're going to get you, you have a, a distinct possibility of getting your heart broken. Um, and it's the same thing. Like if there is a specific house, cause there are people who are living in that house who may not be ready to let go of that house. 
maybe they are. So when you treat about what you want in a house and those people are ready, then they might, you know, they, you know, the universe might signal to them, hey, you know, you've wanted out for now. There's somebody who's willing to buy your house. Why don't you consider what, you know, so it's possible. Um, but you can't treat people out of their house. You can't treat somebody into a relationship with you. You can't treat somebody out of a car. You know, you gotta follow the rules. And there are a few. Um, so, uh, that's what's going on there. All right. I didn't realize we were going to talk about treatment today, but that's what she's talking about. So the, tr I would say that the mission today, should we choose to accept it? Let's see. Uh, well, you know, the mission today, should you choose to accept it, is to experiment with treatment. Try it. And if you're not comfortable with what's going on, then there are all kinds of practitioners who are happy to help you. Uh, there are ministers that are happy to help you. I can honestly tell you one of the... There's a couple of them, like Sharon's, uh, Sharon's a really excellent writer. Jesse is an excellent writer. Uh, what you, and Jesse actually did just, he wrote a beautiful treatment for somebody and then he sent it to a couple of practitioners and has asking with the permission of the person. Okay. And said here, this, this is the treatment to begin with. But at any point, if there's a word that doesn't resonate with the person who the treatment is for, they have the right to come back and say, can you change this word? And so, you know, if you would like that, there are probably people who would be happy to write a treatment for you if you would like to do a treatment regularly. It's an option. We also have a world ministry of prayer. So if you're not comfortable with the treatment, you can call the world ministry of prayer and get somebody and they are 24 seven who will do a treatment for you. I think you can also email them like, and they'll email you a treatment back. So it's possible. It is possible. The, 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 you know, these are possible. So that's my, my suggestion. Explore your options in treatment and don't ever be afraid to change the words. That's the mission today. You should choose to accept it. Speak your word and see that it doesn't come back to you. See that it comes back to you abundant. See that it comes back to you and speak it with your thought and your feeling. All right, beloveds, I am going to take a deep breath now and remind you of the spiritual practice of self-care. Do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever that looks like. Big, small, doesn't matter. Point is practice on yourself. One, I am encouraging you to create a habit. I want you to, when, when you practice on yourself, you are setting yourself up so that no matter what happens, you can respond lovingly, kindly, and compassionately. That's why I suggest it every day. All right. The other thing is, is, you know, you are your own best test subject. But the most important reason to practice self-care on yourself, you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. This is the truth. All right. Um, I would say, hang on. The basic easy suggestions. Take a deep breath before you speak, especially to yourself. Take a walk, take a nap, take a break. I'm about to take a vacation. I'm super excited. And it's a vacation where we're going to do a lot of just hanging out and watching movies. Like I am going to do this thing called rest. I'm super excited about it. All right. I do have a couple of, ex I'm super excited to go to the zoo though. So there's going to be at least a couple of ex excursions. You know, we don't want to just curl up in the house and not get any sunlight. <laughs> Even though it's going to rain for the first half the time, the time that he's here. Um, so practice on yourself. And there's lots of ways to do it. And I also want to remind you some of the other things. Eat dessert first. All right. You know me. Big believer that chocolate's the first step to fixing anything. But what I'm reminding you is that your life is a special occasion. Don't save the good stuff. Go out of your way to make the ordinary extraordinary a little more often. Don't save the fancy dishware just for holidays. Use it on a Tuesday. You don't have to do it very often, but use it more often than you are. All right. Wear the fancy clothes more often than you are. All right. Um, 
there are other things and I don't remember them. So I'm going to keep moving forward. The rest of the suggestions are basic, easy. Do something to uh, engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like for you, unless today is your day of rest, which it was for me. I said that and then we got in here and finished the last little thing that we needed to do to get this room ready for Gary. So, you know, um, I do encourage you to drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. You know how I feel about hydration. I do encourage you to get early in your day bright light. It's cloudy out there. Artificial light will work too. So bear that in mind. All right. Uh, and I also am going to end you with my quote, my Ernest Holmes quote, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. All right. Because heaven is not a place. It's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. Once you learn that, once you learn to create that, then heaven ceases to be a place and can become any place. It's a superpower. <laughs> and you have it. Did you know you were a superhero? You are your own superhero. Um, once you learn to create that heavenly mindset for yourself, one, nobody can take it away from you. And two, I mean, right? It's, it's grace. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you, right? State of mind, state of consciousness. You come pre-installed with that Christ consciousness. And the easiest way to activate it is love. That's the password. That's the password. Practice it. All right. Um, and you can always take Emma Curtis Hopkins advice. Look for the good and praise it. When you count your blessings, you find that you have far more than you thought you did. Yeah. So try it. Uh, and one of their the science will tell you that one of the best ways to, uh, to, to change a grumpy mood, random acts of kindness or acts of uh, volunteer service, which is kind of the same thing. So try it. If we want to create a world that works for everybody, which is the motto of, of science of mind for center of centers for spiritual living, living one, we do the work on ourselves, uh, so that we become islands of peace, islands of calm. And we respond lovingly, kindly, and compassionately to people when they are going through their own storms. And then we can hold our light up so that they know where to put their feet. We can't walk their path for them, but we can hold our light up so they can see the path that they're walking. All right. So they're not stumbling off into the shallows. Okay. I think I'm at the part, social media. We are Creative Life Search Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I commend them to you. There are hours of content on the YouTube channels and the Facebook channels. Feel free to go check them both out. Like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff. Um, and if you want to know what's going on with the center, email info at creativelife.org. That'll get you on the constant contact. The constant contacts will then, um, the hot links are hot. You get one email a month. Week, week, sorry, week. There's a real person doing it, so you're not going to get overwhelmed. Trust me. Uh, but the hot links, when it says click here now, it'll either take you right to the information you want or to the person that will help you get it. All right. Yep. And I'm on to the part where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a practical day, a practicing day, a work on your treatment day, a kind day, a compassionate day, a fry yay. A do something unusual day, a good day. And if that's too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved child of God. You are a brilliant light, divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action or as Reverend Jesse likes to call, call us, you are a godly. Okay. I like to remind you at the end of this to, to explore the truth of your being. To peel back the layers of who you have been told you are and get to know who God knows you to be. Because I can promise you that the person that God knows you to be is good. And pretty cool. So explore the truth of your being. All right. Okay. Uh, as I said, last gasp for this background. We'll have a new background for a little, for a little bit of time. Um, while my brother occupies this space. So I'm excited about that. Uh, and, but, and these should go. Every day, pretty close to nine. Uh, there may be days where they happen a little early and maybe days that they happen a lot later. But, you know, I'll try and keep it pretty close to time. All right. Yep. I'm done, I think. 
whatever else. Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. The only thing different about tomorrow is that I will have my brother. That's it. Um, we're going to, well, I'm still going to get up and go to the park and, uh, then just do. And so I'm going to remind you that you are loved and I will see you next time.